to start with, we will see how we can load the data from CSV and Excel files into Power BI Desktop. Once you have installed the Power BI Desktop, how do we launch the Power BI Desktop? This is the question. Okay, now I just go to the Power uh, the Start up, uh, Start button, and here I just type the Power BI Desktop. Type Power BI Desktop, and you click on the Power BI Desktop icon here, or you can click on the Open here. You need to leave space, power space, BI space, desktop, and then uh, you need to click on the power BI desktop. Now the tool is being launched. Let's wait for a few seconds. First time when you launch it, it will take uh, some time. And also in your C drive, if you don't have sufficient space, even in that case, it will take longer time. So this is your Power BI desktop and the green color, whatever you see, this is your welcome screen. I don't need this welcome screen. What I do is I just click on this cross mark. I just want to close this one. Yes, we are done. Next one is I'm going to click on the get data. And here you will find the text CSV. Look here. So here, if you click on the get data, it is exactly like your excel icon when you open your excel file you will find an icon something similar to this okay and uh, here if i click on this you can see a lot of connectors here when you click on more you will find more connectors because uh, in power bi desktop uh, it gives a lot of connectors for you to connect to different source system because in the enterprises the data are available in different source systems and uh, you know with the different connectors you will be able to connect to different data sources and then you can load the data on your Power BI desktop. Look here, in this case, I'm going to click on this text CSV because I'm going to open a file with the .csv extension. You can also open a file with .txt file. And if you see here, when I hover the cursor here, on the right side, you can see that import data from text or CSV file. Either you can, with this connector, you can load even a text file, which means the file with the uh, .txt extension or the file with .csv extension. CSV stands for comma separated value. And I'm going to hit the connector now. So now I just select here and I'm going to load a file by the name of uh, sales underscore w04.csv. Yes, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll discuss that. Okay, we'll discuss that. That is for your assignment. So what uh, the suggestion, you just watch what I do. And then I will share the uh, files. Uh, I believe all of you are accessed. I'll explain you later offline. Okay, Yamini, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Sales underscore W04.csv. Look here, this is the file. Okay. The suggestion is, yeah, you can um, simply watch my video. And you have a week's time. Henceforth, we will have uh, every weekend session, Saturday and Sunday. So in that case, weekdays, five days, you have time. You watch my videos, uh, the uh, the live session videos, and then you practice it. Okay, that way we can make a significant pro progress because here we have a mix of people. Majority who are uh, not having programming background, and if you start do it side by side along with me, it will take longer time. Okay. And uh, end of the day, I will not be able to cover whatever the topic that I plan to cover it today. Okay. And what I will do is, um, I just selected this file and I, I'll explain everything. Oh, Yamani, yeah, don't worry. Okay. I just selected the sales.csv file. It's a comma separated value file. I just loaded it here. It'll take some time. Look here, it shows the sample data from my CSV file. So this is the CSV file. This is called your data preview window. Before loading the entire data, it will give you some sample data. You need to check uh, the quality of the data at a high level. And you just take, it will help you to take a cursory look at your data. You can see what are the columns are there in this uh, data set. And also if you find any data related issues, okay, since let's say you are a, a marketing manager, sales manager, you know very well what sales you made at least in you know, some extent or not some extent, you know, majority of the sales are uh, related transactions, you know, very well. And with this itself, you can make out, if you see something abnormal, you can make out uh, very quickly. For example, in the quantity column, if you see something triple nine, then something wrong, you can easily catch out. 
So in that case, what you can do is as part of when you view the data in the preview window itself, you can decide whether uh, are we looking at the current data or not? Because in the real world scenario, the same file name will exist in different folders in different locations. You know, right? In that case, to uh, overcome any confusions, you just uh, take a cursory look at it. And here, if you see here, load, transform data, and cancel. There are three buttons are there here. And if you scroll towards the right side and left side, if you see everything is good. According to me, this data is okay, but still there are some issues are there. If you see here, the NEA is there, not available. Some missing values are there, fine. But this is not the full data. With this smaller subset of the data itself, I can make up. There are some issues are there. It needs kind of, kind of some treatment. I'm going to hit the load button instead of transform data. So what is cancel button? When you click on cancel, it will not get loaded. It is very simple. Transform data, it will take you to the Power Query Editor. Power Query Editor is one of the important components in Power BI Desktop. What we are seeing is Power BI Desktop. And when you click on this, it will take you to the Power Power Query Editor. It is kind of a kitchen that is where we do data cleaning, data merging, data formatting, everything we do there. But I don't want to do upfront the data transformation. Everything. Instead, I'm going to hit the load button. Now it is establishing a connection to your model, creating connection in your model. And this is what your model here. Don't worry. I'll explain you once again everything. So this is your report. You when you click on this icon, it will show you the report. You what whatever that you see it here currently, that is what your report view. And this is what your data view. The middle one is data view. To create a report, we need a data. Yes, we have loaded the data. And we before we load in the data in the preview window, we just check uh, is it the correct data or not? Okay, data is correct, but some extent only you can validate it with the data preview window because it is showing only the subset of the data. Look here, how do you make sure the data file got loaded? Look here on the just beneath the data view, uh, you will find the file which got loaded recently here. Okay. And uh, next to the file, you will find the table icon. So you might be wondering the sales W04 is a dot CSV file, comma separated value file. It is also called as a flat file. But how come Power BI assigned the table icon to this one next to this? In Power BI, no matter what type of file you load it, whether you load JSON file or Excel file, uh, or you load any other file, end of the day, uh, it will get uh, loaded as a table. It will consider everything as a table here. Just give me a second here. Yeah. It'll get loaded as a table. Okay, it has, it consists everything as a table. Simple analogy is no matter which state you come from, end of the day, we are all Indian, right? So as far as India is concerned, okay? There's something like that. It considers all type of file systems as a table. Just give me a second. I have some. File, uh, fine. Okay, you just beneath the data. A pane. This is your data pane. This is your visualizations pane. Just under this, you can see the file which you loaded a while back. And if you click on the greater sign here, this one will get expanded. And you can see all the columns that belong to that CSV file here, out here. Okay. Fine. You have, you can see all the columns that belongs to this file. You can see it here. And now the question is, where can I see the data for this one? That is where you need to switch it to your data view. Currently, we are in this view. We are in this report view. What you are seeing is your report view. This, this white color thing is your report view. To see the data for this table, you need to click on this icon. When you click on this icon, you will see all the data for this table over here. It will take some time. Don't panic. Initially, it will not display anything. First time, you need to wait for some time. You can see all the data belongs to this file. Now it got displayed over here. And when you click on this, so this is your report view. And if you click on this, this is a report. If you want to switch over from here to the data view, you need to click on the data view. You understood? Okay. Remember, this is very important. And you can see only the table name, which is nothing but the file name in this case, in our example. You know, usually we call the table. Okay. And this is a table name. And the column names, you can see it here. But the, if you want to see the data, you need to click on this data view. 
and uh, from data view to model view you have something called model view if you want to switch from year to year you need to click on the model view here you can see the table something like this if you know data model those of you are aware of the data model you know this one okay so in the this is kind of a erwin model okay you can see the table like this here also you can see the table name and then the column name and when that uh, table got created or refreshed all the information you can see that apart from this you can see something called import storage mode the storage mode is the import okay this is your data set and this is what your report view very good we have successfully loaded this file you have understood the three types of view one is the report view the one what we are seeing by default when you open the power bi desktop file what you see is your a report view mm -hmm. it is also called as a report canvas it is also called as a report case because this is where we create the reports for example if i click on this chart here clustered column chart the chart will get dragged over here okay in here we can drag and drop the columns and you can populate this visual with some columns now this visual got created the dummy data you can drag and drop the columns for example if i drag the country column and drop it here and then the moment when i drop the quantity column here you can see that uh, in each category how many quantities we sold you can see it here okay so there are three categories are there in each category how much we sold okay fine uh, this this looks fine and if i scroll down here and i can see something wrong with the sales column okay uh, this sales column is a text type okay i instead of quantity i just uh, click on this and i'm going to remove this if i drop the sales column over here and uh, count of sales okay it shows the count of sales because it considers uh, it as a text value just give me a second i'm getting some noise here uh you know yeah yomini i just uh, made sure that now the screen uh, you know i think some problem the screen now you can i hope you can see the screen here and here when you drop the sales column <clears throat> it it do it does the count on the sales column instead of doing the sum it is doing the count it is not correct and if you over the cursor here you can see the 909882 it is showing the in office supplies how many number of records are there something that it shows but we don't need to see how many number of records are there in each um, category instead you want to see the sum of sales in each category so what i do here is um, this requires some kind of treatment in power bi desktop you remember that for each numeric column profit quantity and row dot id is also numeric column for each nu numeric column next to that you can find the sigma notation with that itself you can find out uh, easily that uh, the numeric columns are assigned with number data type okay uh, and shipping cost but when it comes to sales next to that we don't see the sigma notation here and if you click on this column once gently on the top you can see the menu something like that not only for the sales column any column if you click on it here it will display the menu with the detailed information about each column for example in this case the sales column name is sales but the data type is text here look here this is a text here actually this one is supposed to be a decimal data decimal number and the format is text and the summarization is don't summarize but when you look at when you click on the quantity column here you can see that quantity is a whole number it's a integer and you can see the sum for all the numeric column it uses the sum function as an aggregation function that means when you drag and drop any numeric column into your visual power bi what it does is by it performs sum it applies the sum on the numeric column if i drop the quantity column for example if i remove this column and when i drop the quantity here look at sum of quantity by default it it applies the sum function the aggregation function sum function on your numeric column in our case this is your quantity sum of quantity and supposing you want to see no i don't want to see the sum of quantity instead uh, uh, you know i don't want to do sum here but since it is a column chart you cannot you know view it the detailed one for example if i click on the table visual 
this visual see in power bi we call charts as a visual including table if i want to convert this column chart to table you select this visual go here click on table it will get converted in table but in this case if you click on the sum up one next to that you will find the uh, down arrow drop down when you click on it you will see don't summarize but when it comes to column chart you don't see the don't summarize but when it comes to table visual you have another option called don't summarize when i click on it it will give you the detail information look here how many quantities we sold in each and every categories it gives me everything in detail but in general we don't need transaction level data so that is the reason why what it does it it applies the sum by default on this numeric column but unfortunately the sales column it did not apply the sum because power bi assigned text data type to sales column now the question is why power bi assigned text data type to sales that we will go and explore it by going to the another component called power query editor so what are the three components the first component report what you are seeing is your one component report view second component is model view which we will discuss it later and the next component is transform data this is your power query data this is where we do all kind of data cleaning everything in the case of power query editor whatever uh, we discussed here in the canvas right report canvas next to that on the right side of the report canvas we see this one sales w0 it is considered as a table power by consider all type of file including sql server table oracle table, anything you whether it's a table or file or anything will consider as a table but when you open the power query editor the same table is called as a query query okay query and you can see that power query editor here when you open the power query editor so you can see query is here you can find if you have more than one file loaded here you will see more than one query is here at this moment we have only one table data is available it is considered as a query here okay and on the right side if you if you maximize this is where we do all data cleaning everything remember this is what your power query editor and you just i just scroll towards the right side and check what went wrong why sales column got assigned with the text data if you notice one thing very clearly in power query editor next to each and every column you will find some icon here abc 1231.2 with that itself you can quickly understand the sales column got assigned with the text data type abc is text data type and next to quantity you can see 1 to 3 that is your whole number next to discount you can see 1.2 with that you can understand quickly this is a decimal number data type now okay everything is fine but why sales column got assigned this text data type there is something wrong here but thank god in the first value itself in the sales column the first value itself we can make out that along with the numeric value the dollar value came in here and if you scroll down and see here there are no more dollars assigned to that one you can click on the drop down here like in excel how you do it you can do this. so you can see everywhere it is good numeric but only for this value it got mixed with the dollar it is called uni character just because you have only one uni character or character value mixed up with your number value entire sales column got converted as a or got assigned with text data type now the question is since it is a cost text column can i do any arithmetic i cannot do it what can i do now now we it requires some kind of treatment data cleaning or data formatting in this case i just keep the cursor somewhere here okay and right click on it replace values replace a dollar with some empty string dollar and i'm not going to specify anything here that means replace a dollar with empty string because it's a text data type you need to remember this for text data type if you find anything blank that means it is not a blank it will it will consider that as a empty string okay i'm going to leave nothing here hit okay now the dollar got stripped off it got removed only the number is there but still if you scroll down here you have na is there what i will do is na stands for not available that means blank value i will replace all the na by zero here i'm going to hit okay make sure that 
all values in a sales column are numeric values. It can have a blank value, but the blank value, what happens is Power Query Editor replace the blank value with NEA. You need to replace that NEA by explicitly by zero. So now we can see all the numeric values. Maybe it is a numeric, so it is an integer, but it's a decimal value, but all of them are numeric. We don't see any value mixed up with any character or dollar value, special character. Okay, look here, but we have bl some blank values are there, fine, but we don't see any other value mixed up with any string or character value. I'm going to make sure, I just made sure there are no issues. And the empty is one record is there. So this is the statistics we can see it. You just click on the ABC here. These are the data types that are available here in Power Query Editor, decimal number, fixed decimal. This is a decimal number. Sales is a decimal. It cannot be whole number, isn't it? I'm going to click on this now. Now the sales column got converted from text to decimal number data type. Very good. And the rest of the columns are fine. Uh, the order date, I have some issue that I will come back later. I just click on the close and apply here in the Power Query Editor. So what is this close and apply? What are the steps that you carry out here? It will record it just beneath the applied steps. The first uh, three steps that has been done automatically by Power Query Editor. We don't have to do anything uh, from our side. Okay, it has been done automatically by the Power Query Editor. The first three steps and the filtered rows. Mm, I think the filter rows also done automatically. And the next one is the replaced value. Look here. When I clicked on the replaced value stair, the corresponding M script, this is called your M script. It shows you what we did. We just clicked on the sales column and then, sorry, we just right clicked on the sales column and we selected the replace from the context menu. When I, when I clicked on the replace, uh, I specified find in the find field, we specified a dollar and a value. Right, so the value I mentioned nothing. Whatever the action I did it just by pointing and clicking on it, for that behind the scene, Power Query Editor generated something called M script. This is called your M script. It is also called as a M language. It is also called as a M language. Which one? This one. We don't have to write M language M script for this simple data formatting and all type data type formatting or data formatting all the things we don't have to write explicitly all we know just simply click on the column replace click on the replace and whatever the value want to find it find it and replace it with some value. But here what we did replace a dollar by empty string. And for in which column sales column. When you click on when you click on this thing, right? When you click on this step, it helps us to understand what we did uh, in this step. Like in in our apartment, we have CCTV. Which person came first? Which person came later? We can see everything in sequence. The same way it maintains all the steps we carried out in proper sequence. And then what we did, we replaced the NEA by zero. Wasn't it? That is what we did it. When I click on this, you can see that in all the NEA by zero, I replaced it. And then next one is the filtered rows. Uh, this one was done automatically. And the next one is change type one. I just changed the sales column to number data type. Look here. So whatever the order that I followed in order to apply these steps, it literally maintains the same order of the sequence uh, or the, the steps, the same order of the sequence have been recorded under the applied steps section. But each, uh, each uh, step, if you click on it, you can see the corresponding M script generated or M language generated with Power Query Editor here. We don't have to do anything. It, it generates automatically, but uh, I will help you how you can modify this one little later. At this moment, let us forget about it. You remember this, just beneath the applied steps, you can find all the steps, whatever you carried out, it will get recorded in pro in the proper sequence. In a sequentially, it will get recorded. And I will show you one more thing here. This is my row.id, first column. 
for example uh, for the report um, that i was uh, that i supposed to create it it doesn't require row dot id column what i do is i'll keep the cursor over right click on it and uh, delete column here where is the remove when i click on remove this column will get removed okay it got removed okay later on i realized no 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 row dot id column is required how can i undo the delete action or the step that i carried out how do, in power query editor control z the control z will not work instead what to do is next to each and every step if you hover the cursor here you can see the cross mark here when you click on the cross it will undo your step that means whatever the step you carried out it will be undone for example removed columns and you can see that which column I removed it, row.id. There is something called table.remove columns. Removed. But I need this column back again. So, you know, mistakenly, I removed this column. How do I undo this? Click on this cross mark next to the removed columns. You will get your row.id column back. Okay. Like control is there. Okay. This cross is something like uh, so. Sometimes what it happens in the real time scenario, you will be performing various steps if you open the report file you will see in the power query you will see a lot of uh, steps will be there and you will get confused in which step what i did and you need to click on this one uh, when you click on this specific uh, step the corresponding m script also can with this you can make out what step that you know, what action that you carried out in the in each step but there are some steps you don't have to worry about this has been done behind the scene by power query editor now, what are the steps that I carried out? It all happened in memory. For example, I'm going to remove the row.id also. Everything has been done in memory. Now, I just click on the file. We have three options are available in Power Query Editor. In the file, close and apply, apply and close. When I click on close, what will happen? All these steps will not get applied to my data set permanently. But when I apply, all these steps will get applied on this data set. Like, uh, removing the column, changing data type, whatever the step that we carried out from top to bottom, that will be applied to your data set permanently. When I use close and apply, it will close the power. For example, I don't, I'm done my job with power creditor. I don't need this any longer. You can close the power creditor, but make sure that while closing it, you apply all these steps to my model. Model is something like your table permanently, all the changes permanently. I'm going to maximize this now. Okay, it has been done perfectly. Now we go to the data view and we will see. Before that, we will go to the model view also and we'll go and take a look at this is where it applied all the changes permanently. To see that in detail, you just go switch to data view. In the data view, row.id column was not there. It got removed successfully. Very good. And if I go towards the right side, when I click on the sales column, you can find here also the sales column got assigned with the correct data decimal number. And if you switch to report view and here, if you drop the look here, the next to the sales column, now we can find the sigma notation. That means the sales column got successfully converted with number data type. Understood? Amit, is it clear? So I just drop the sales column over here. Along with this category, you can see the sum of quantities, sum of sales. Yes, um, sound that yeah, I'll just increase the size. But anyhow, I will take a deep dive in the visualization later point in time. Don't worry. Okay. So this is what we can see. I'll just, if you want, you can make it bold also. Fine, we are done. So we have single format visual. You can do a lot of formatting. That we will see it as part of data visualization topic. Okay, we are done with the table visual. Fine. Or uh, now we have done simple um, data pre-processing. Data pre-processing is nothing but it's a broader term. As for a data processing, we 
we uh, removed a column row.id and also we changed the data type from text to number data type but before you convert from number to sorry text to number you need to make sure that uh, any data related uh, issues you need to address it for example in that case dollar was mixed up with the numeric value make sure that you remove the dollar and then convert it to your decimal number if you don't remove the dollar and if you directly convert it to the numeric data type what will happen is it will get confused so dollar is not a numeric value hence it failed to convert as a numeric value up front it will throw an error for that okay and in that, that specific value will show error uh, rest of the value will show with the correct thing and but uh, only that one will will get displayed with error that is not acceptable because even if you miss out any specific transaction with error or something else it will not give the correct answer uh, how about my voice quality is it clear because um, you know when vijay says my voice is uh, breaking often i think um, one second let me just check my net connection yeah my net connection is very good I think you need to check your net connection, Vijay. Anybody else is facing the same issue? Yeah, seventh uh, says uh, no issues. Okay, okay, very good. Okay, it's clear. Why is this clear? I think uh, you need to connect with uh, your mobile or broadband connection. You check your net connection. Okay, fine. The next one is this is the data view. Okay, all the steps got applied permanently. Your data. Now the question is, uh, why can't I change the data type? Can't I change the data type in the data view itself? You can change it. When you click on this column, look at the new menu got displayed here. Here it shows the column name and the data type here. If you click on the drop down here, you will find all that. You can select the data type here itself. But if you do so, what will happen is since you have one value combined with the dollar, it will get converted as an error. But other issue here is if you do it anything here, you cannot revoke, you cannot undo, you cannot use control Z. It will become permanent. Once that specific value become error, you cannot, again, you need to reload the data. Remember one thing very clearly in the real time scenario, we are working with millions of records. Loading uh, data every time is not acceptable. It will slow down your productivity. If it takes one hour time to load the data just because one mistake again if you reload the data it will take another one hour okay hence you do it everything whatever the data transformation that you want to do it you do it in your power query editor okay and you can see the data type everything is assigned correctly and if you want to see how many number of records to data you know it loaded how many number of records got loaded in this file in the data view on the left side, right beneath the left side, you can see the number of records, 25,004 rows. And also in the sales column, how many distinct values? Anyhow, uh, in the case of numeric column, we usually don't see the distinct values. Only in the categorical column, we see the distinct values. But still, it gives you an additional statistics. All we need is this one. How many number of records? Yes, 25,004 rows got loaded. I know very well this file has... 25,000, the entire data got loaded. And also we have assigned the correct data type for the, at least for the numeric columns. Very good. The text column seems to be good. Everything is good. And then what I'll do is the next thing is, the data, whatever I loaded, the CSV file, CSV stands for comma separated value. Look here, I'll just go to the operating system and I'll show you that file also. Those of you logged in little later, it will be helpful for you. And if I open the file explorer. This is what your file explorer. And if I go to the D, uh, this is where my data file resides here, sales underscore W04. Look here, this is the file. I use, sorry, not that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, why should I do this one? Let me just go here and then take a look at this here. Do you not here? Yeah. 
Okay, I better I'll open Excel file. CSV file, you can open it using a notepad also. And at the same time, you can use your uh, Excel also. Again, I'll have to search here. It is not there. Better I will close this one. Let me just search it here, W04. Okay, what I will do is I will just open this notepad. Sales, okay, D colon, that one. This is another way of doing it. Instead of searching it, sales underscore W04 dot CSV. Sorry, I mistakenly entered the wrong name, notepad. Yes, it is getting loaded now. Sometimes, right, <laughs> difficult to find. Look at this is the file. Each column is separated by comma here. Hence, it is called dot .csv file, comma separate. There are some projects uh, for each column. Each column will be separated by some other delimiter. The comma is a delimiter. Okay. In some cases, they use pipe symbol. Uh, pipe symbol. They use uh, semicolon. Okay, uh, to uh, to uh, you know to distinguish from one another one column to other column, they use semicolon or pipe symbol. But majority of the projects where I work, they use comma each column. Especially when it comes to flat file, the CSV file, each column is separated by comma. Then each column and the values are separated by comma. So look here in this uh, this column name is uh, row dot id. In between the column, in, 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 the, in this column name, they use dot here in the middle, okay, row.id. And comma, with the comma, we can identify, hey, we're row ID for this column, the value is here. The next column starts here. Next column value starts here. To, uh, to uh, you know, to separate each and every column, they use something called column separate or column uh, delimiter is called comma here. Hence, the file extension is also dot csv. And I just close this one. This file have 25,004 records. You're loaded. That file is currently available in my operating system. But in that file, okay, I closed it. And look here. In this case, I have removed a column row.id. Can you see row.id? It is not there. But the row.id column is still available in my operating system file. It is not removing the data from my or the column from my operating system file. Look at row.id is still there in the operating system. But here I removed the row.id. That means that doesn't mean see when I remove a column or when I delete a record in my Power BI desktop, that doesn't mean it will get deleted, the column will get deleted, records will get deleted, operating system file. This one will remain as it is. Once you load the data into Power BI desktop, this entire data will get loaded into your Power BI memory. There you do a data column removal. You are removing the column in the memory, everything, and then you store the data in your data model. Uh, in, in, the, in this case, my data model, I have only one table. Whatever the changes I made, that gets stored here. In the interview, they ask you, once you load a data using, uh, once, you are, once you load your, either the CSV file data or Excel file data into your Power BI desktop, where the data gets stored? The data gets stored into your Power BI desktop itself. 
got it the data gets stored into your power bi desktop itself now the question is uh, then uh, don't i need that file sir you don't need this operating system file because the data got uh, attached or loaded with your power bi desktop itself okay for for example i just uh, published this to cloud power bi cloud service and uh, i just save this with some name here I just say PBI. I'm going to hit publish button now. When I hit the publish button, what happens? It shows on my cloud, Power BI cloud service, what are the folders that I created in the past? It displays that. I'm going to select the dev folder. This report file will get loaded into my dev folder on my cloud. So how do I see the cloud, sir? I just go to the browser and uh, let me do one thing i will just open this one and here i just use app.powerbi.com this is what your power bi cloud service remember that app.powerbi.com since i already created the login credentials it is connecting here it is too early to discuss about this you don't worry about this at this moment let us focus only on the Power BI desktop at this moment. Look here, I just go to the workspaces and here I have something called dev here. This is where in this folder, I publish this report, load csvdata.pbi, load csvdata.pbi. Look here, this is the file. Next to the file, you can see the icon chart. Look here, when I keep the cursor over here, you can see the report next to that, isn't it? But the next to that, you can see something called the data file, data set. The data set name also same as my report file. I just clicked on this report. Did I publish any data? Nothing, right? The underlying data for this report also gets published automatically by Power BI Desktop. In order to publish this report to cloud, you need to have something called data gateway should run in your Power BI Desktop. That I already installed it. And it is up and running in my laptop. With that only, I'm able to publish. It's kind of an agent. It's an interface, okay? Or middleman, okay? So he's the one who takes care of publishing this report into Power BI Desktop along with the underlying data in a secured manner. Which one? The data gateway. That we'll see it later. And at this moment, make sure that when you publish the report to your cloud, along with that, the underlying data file also get published um, implicitly by the Power BI using data gateway. So why I have shown here was the data for this file got stored into this file itself. Okay, so that is what we can see here. Okay, we cannot say it's a report file. The report file has both the data also stored in it. Okay. By now you understood uh, uh, how to load it. It's a very simple one. All the points, whatever I discussed, you need to remember it. And then uh, the file name, the report file name is load CSV data underscore PBI. What is the extension of the report file? I just go here and I'll show you save as. You go here, load CSV data PBI dot PBIX. Can you see it here? The extension for the Power BI report file is PBIX. This report file have both the data as well as the report in it, the visuals and other things, okay? Next, what I do is I will just load the Excel file into this one. Either you can click on the get data or you can click on the Excel workbook here itself. When I click on it here itself, I can see that a lot of data are available here and I'm going to load the expenses.xls file. Now I'm going to load another Excel file. Uh, you know, initially I started with loading a CSV file. Now we will see how we can load the data that is available in Excel sheet. In the case of Excel sheet, you will have more than one sheets also, right? Sometimes you will have only one sheet. You will have more than one subsheet. You will have it. And in this case, you need to select of these uh, three subsheet, which subsheet you need to load it here. I need this subsheet data. I don't need the rest of them. Just click on it here to select this one. 
Look here, the load button got enabled. Now I just hit the load button. My Excel data now will get loaded into my Power BI desktop. It's pretty simple. Yes, the Excel. So now we need to go and check just beneath the data pane. You can see that expenses data got loaded here. It just uh, collapsed this one. And if you expand this, you can see what are the columns that are available as far as expenses. You can see it here. And when you go to the, when you switch to the data view, and if you select the expenses here, you can see the three columns here, year, month, and expenses. Got it? So these columns are available as part of your expenses table you remember that okay whether it's a csv file or excel file irrespective of the type of the file once you load into power bi desktop what power bi says is you load whatever file i will consider them as a table that's all so that is what is happening but now you understood with this simple example how to load an excel file so we, you know it's no it's a it's a no-brainer job anybody can do this one it's a very simple one now, with this two examples, we understood how to load a CSV file, how to load a Excel file, and in the Excel file or CSV file, how to do the data transformation. So that is when I have shown you uh, connecting, uh, opening the Power Query Editor. In the Power Query Editor, we do all kind of data transformation, everything. Okay, like uh, removing a column and uh, removing the dollar. Uh, that got mixed with the numeric value and then replacing the missing value by zero and then we converted the sales column from text to decimal number this is one data transformation or data formatting we did type costing you know from converting from one wrong data type to correct data we converted it 